And so today's talk is about uh, automating machine learning workflow with DVC. Um, and let me introduce myself first. My name is Hongju. I'm living in Korea. And I, for, I work for SK Hynix as a data scientist. So um, some, of you, some of you know, uh, not, may, not, may not know my company, but actually SK Hynix is one of the largest memory chip maker. And you would easily find, um, find some when you uncover your laptop or desktop, especially when you are using uh, uh, the computer from Apple or Dell. And my recent wor uh, work interests is building a knowledge graph and supply chain management, doing them automatically and uh, some kind of mining software repository. It's all machine learning job. So today I'm going to talk about DVC, an open source tool for managing ML workflow efficiently. And firstly, I will start from how software develop. Oh, sorry. Okay, here's the agenda. Uh, I will start from how software developers uh, work well with various practices and tools, then talk about data scientists and machine learning developers who have some challenges to adopt their work with software developments. I think DVC could help them to work more efficiently. Um, and then lastly, uh, I will show you how to use DVC, how how DVC work with an example project. Actually, the title is automating ML ML workflow, not automatic uh, automated machine learning itself. So actually, uh, actually there is exists an active area for auto ML. So you better notice that this session is not about auto ML, auto machine learning. Mm. So um, let's start with uh, waterfall to agile. Um, I don't think people used to work with waterfall way for developing software, even in the old days. Designing, building a software, and really uh, could never meet a set of requirements at once. I've never experienced such a case after doing my homework at CS101 class. However, it's useful to learn we should uh, that we should work with iterative process other than waterfall. Since the requirements are always changes or not concrete enough, we used to organize a small set of tasks and do what we can do earlier and release features in progressive way until all the requirements are satisfied. So as we are not working alone and the iterative process should run fast with extreme efficiency, we, divide, we used to divide our work stages into a few steps and try to keep uh, moving forward without a stop. And for each stage, we have been continuously, uh, we have been continuously uh, think about how we can do better with the job. Some people start to talk about methods just like TDD and continuous integration or continuous development uh, deployment. And some uh, develop some efficient tools uh, such like Git and Maven or, or a JUnit, a Jenkins. So those tools help us to do our job easier and more efficient way. So we have so many helps even on deploying, operating, and monitoring uh, our software. And maybe sooner or later, software development could be the easiest job in this world. Now, how about machine learning? So there are typical workflow in machine learning as well which are data acquisition and data pre-processing and build model 
and evaluation and model selection, and lastly, deployment. Although such workflows are a part of the whole process of developing machine learning application, but they are relatively new and less developed. This is because data science or machine learning is different with software development, as the software development is different from the developing hardware with more waterfall process. So these are the typical uh, process of machine learning. And this is the typical workflow in, in one, one chart. Uh, it's a, it is an iterative process starting from data acquisition, acquiring on the left side, uh, but very different from what, uh, what that software developing process as it deals with data uh, and more along with codes. Sometimes data and model takes more important part of process with just a few lines of code. Also, it is a team sport, and some parts need some specialists like data acquisition and processing stage. Uh, these uh, data engineers area and also pre-processing and model selection uh, is for data scientists for, or for machine learning engineer. And even the software developing engineers are needed for the last step, the deployment, to build an application code. It's pretty complicated, isn't it? So for this reason, a machine learning workflow cannot just follow software development processes. And I think there are uh, machine learning's own three main challenges in ma machine learning projects. They are burgeoning data along with code, and deploy a model, not a code. And lastly, metric-driven uh, driven develop, uh, development. So uh, people used to have their own burgeoning system, as you see in the screen. And later, we don't know uh, which one is the proper working version. Mm. And also data scientists should share those data, but it's not easy because they usually take so, uh, so large space in storage and hard to manage. A few gigabyte or even larger data, how can we, met, uh, how can we easily uh, share them? Another problem is sometimes changes in data triggers pipelines, even there's no single lines of code changes but it's difficult to notice which part of data has been changed. So we should keep organizing the data with its related code so that we can pr reproduce output at any time uh, if the data changes. Uh, this part, it, I'm sorry, this line is supposed to be a separate a section as a separate challenge. Uh, I made a mistake here. Um, different from software development, the most important and final artifact is a model, but not a code. So we have a version, uh, we have to version models and keep tracking of them which data and code produces the model. Lastly, uh, machine learning is a metric di driven job. A software development process starts from requirements and ends uh, and, and with requirements. A metric is the most important milestone teaches what we should do next for the improvement. I'll show you some example what kind of decision we can, uh, can, can be made for tracking the metrics uh, at the last step. Uh, so metrics should be kept uh, tracking along with codes, data, and models. So the metric must be kept, tracked. And now DBC comes out. DBC has, helps to handle these challenges. There are other solutions uh, such as Git LFS, MLflow, and Apache Airflow. But I, I recommend DBC because it's easy to use. If you are familiar with using Git, 
then it's very intuitive to use the DVC with, with a, a Git. And it's uh, language independent. Even though, uh, even the uh, DVC is, uh, is written in Python, but you can do, uh, you, you can use DVC with C languages or Java or, or any other tools, whatever you want. So it's uh, language in, uh, independent. And lastly, uh, it's useful to individual to a large team. Uh, other tools like MLflow, Apache Airflow, they need to manage the web server. But in case of DVC, it's just a client uh, command line tool. So for, uh, you can adopt to your project individually, or you, get, you can uh, share the tool with uh, other members in a large team. So easy, it's easy to start with. Okay, it's time to uh, see how DVC works uh, with the problem of cats and dogs classification. Um, actually, the, this example, the project trains a small uh, VGG net to classify cat and dog images. So go to the uh, GitHub repository later and there will be an instruction to build a Docker image that which contains everything you need for following the walkthrough example. And uh, later containerize the image with running bash shell, then follow the commands. Uh, and the following command should be run inside the Docker container. So this is the typical data uh, directory structure I use, use to work with uh, when I'm doing a uh, machine learning project. So I put a data, some raw data and process. And last, uh, when, I, uh, when I'm ready to uh, deploy the model, then I put the retrain finalized model in the finalized data. And there is a notebook uh, directory Actually, I I use this directory uh, occasionally, but mostly I just uh, put the source code in the source directory at the bottom. So I put the I I I make a cat dog model module. Then when I need to experiment such uh, module. Then I open a notebook and import the cat dog module and test the modules and uh, ex do some experiments. And also there are these some uh, data downloading scripts in a scripts directory and also so, uh, deployment uh, the script for deployments. So to start with, we need to initialize the Git repository, as you see in the screen. Then source, add the source directory, uh, then do some commits. And after that, uh, we do the same thing with DVC init, which initialize the DVC repository inside the Git repository. Uh, so you can see some dot uh, dvc directories and some files inside the directory organizing the whole repository and also we need to uh, add index the dot dvc directory into the git repository uh, and we have to uh, so that we can uh, track the uh, dvc version as well with with git so, and lastly we commit the git uh, a DVC repository with a commit command. And there's a script downloads.shell, uh, which downloads 25K, 25 k, uh, 25,000 images in total, half cats and half dogs. It's pretty large. So I'll, I'll, the script put those files in temp directory. Mm. So there is a, a cat directory and dog directory 
which has 12.5 uh, uh, K images for each. And next step is a set, a set, set of the parameters. Those par parameters are used for uh, data preparation or pre-processing, or it's, uh, it contains some hyperparameters for training a model. So as you see in the pre prep, prep uh, stage, we use a uh, split rate as 0 0.9 which splits the uh, whole data uh, into the training data and test data for training a model and ev the evaluating it. The class size uh, is actually the data set is too large, so the training takes a long time. So I just limited each class with 2,000 images, so in total 4,000 animals inside uh, uh, stored in the training as a t training data set. So with a, if you have a GPU computer, then the training the whole training step will uh, will be finished in a minute. And then we have a learning rate and batch size and number of epochs and validation rate uh, 0 0.2 for the uh, validation steps. Now it's time to pre uh, define the first uh, stage of the pipeline, which is called prepare. So there's a preprocess.py uh, file in cat dog directory, which divides divides 4,000 images into uh, uh, training, uh, uh, um, sorry, uh, training data and test data and sampling uh, 4,000 images in total out of 25K. So the process data stored in data uh, process with the command Python, uh, with the uh, Python command. So you see the options, uh, minus sense is the name of the stage, and P is the parameter, which you have seen in the previous slide, the parameter, and uh, D option is the dependency. So the prep stage is dependent on the uh, pro, uh, preprocess.py, and the output stored in the data uh, processed directory. Mm. So after running uh, the DVC run command with such options, uh, we can check if what kind of uh, files or directories have been changed. So there are uh, three directories and files have changed. Uh, so I add them to the Git repository and commit. So now we, we are start to tra uh, tracking the preparation stage. Okay, thank you. Mm. And next step, uh, step is defining a tra uh, train and evaluate stage. So I named it version 0 0.1 because I just put a one convolutional layer uh, and one fully connected layer, very simple uh, model. So such codes is written in catdogtrain.py. So as you see the first command, I run DVC run again with the, another name train and it, it, uh, it accepts a train parameter with P option and depends on data pre-process, which is was the output of the previous stage, and depends on the train script itself, and the output goes to data with the model.h5 file. It's a model exported file, and it draws a plot data to the plot.json, and uh, the task is run by uh, cat, catdog.train running the cat dog, 
uh, the tree model. And so you will see some output uh, in progress of uh, training the model. And then we will define another uh, stage named evaluate, uh, which depends on the model H5, which was uh, the output of the previous stage and also depends on evaluation script and it tracks the metrics with m option option m uh, with the score dot json so so the the train evaluation metric will store it in the score dot json and we it will keep track uh, with the model i mean the the metric information stored in the score that JSON will be kept tracking with the model uh, file. So I added some more files and made a commit and tag the version as a 0 0.1. Now we have defined the three stages uh, starting from prep to ending with evaluate. So with DVC DAG command, we can see an ASCII art. So the prep or when uh, the train depends on the prep stage and evaluate depends on the train stage. So when you have change on prep stage, the whole DAG has to re reproduce. Uh, or if you have only changes in related to train stages, then only evaluate stage has to be run again. Uh, so when there is nothing have changed, uh, we if we try to re uh, reproduce the experiment with command DVC repro, then you can see there is nothing changed in the previous stages, so nothing ha has to be done. But if I update the model with adding another convolutional layer, then running DVC repro, it detects some change in the source code, so it starts to uh, build a model again. So after finishing the uh, training a model, I put a tag 0 0.2 as a version, as, as another version. And did the same thing, adding a third convolutional layer and put the version 0 0.3 and commit. Now it's time to compare the metrics for each version. Regarding to the accuracy, as you see, the accuracy ACC score is just around 0 0.67 to 0 0.71. So it says uh, just adding convolution or more convolutional layers seems not helping the result. Uh, and I try to uh, to uh, check the training process for each uh, experiment, and it tells something. As you see, the accuracy training accuracy uh, goes high, but the validation accuracy sometimes drops uh, and stop uh, stop increasing at epoch two or three, which means it's overfitting. So it's a clear sign of overfeeding. So I put some regularization with a dropout and then uh, run the DVC repro and do the same training job again. Uh, and, mm, and you see uh, it's still sometimes the, the left part of the chart, it says sometimes the validation accuracy uh, drops, but um, it, it continues to uh, increase. So I also tried the data augmentation. So rather than increasing the size of data, try to manipulate the existing uh, 4,000 images. Um, oh, sorry. And it also helped. So uh, 
later merging two data augmentation techniques and regularization te technique, I could have up to 7.8.0 uh, accuracy. So maybe later you can uh, try this at home with the uh, walkthrough example and the slide. So okay. done. Thank you. Uh, if any questions, just just shoot. Thank you very much. So we are we are not in a room. Uh, people is people is there. So time for questions. Um, Stanislav is asking, how do I recreate the data on a different machine? For code, I do Git clone. What does on one one does one for data? So you can yeah you can check out the the code in with a repo about okay. how do they with the data. How do I recreate the data on different machines? Oh, a good question. Actually, I haven't explained the uh, uh, great feature of DVC in this slide, but you can uh, sh make a shared cache. You know, the Git has a cache inside our home directory, but you, you can think of sharing such cache to the shared storage, and then you can share the cache so that uh, if I'm if I'm on training version 0 0.5 and follower tries to uh, uh, train the same model, he won't. It won't take a minute because the the cache, uh, the shared cache, will just come inside to my uh, DVC uh, repository. So it's amazingly fast because it's using sharing the cache. Okay, okay, thank you. So, any other questions? Um, oh, another one. Yes. Does DVC so, handle version control on the data? Or rather, input data must always be in the same? And we are just burning received the transfer or repair. Um, actually, it, it makes a hash of the file or the directory and put inside a cache. So uh, uh, DVC doesn't do anything with Git, but Git, it, uh, Git uh, tries to manage everything with uh, DVC repository because the DVC repository has been kept burgeoning after we uh, defining a pipeline or uh, uh, training a new model everything output input and dependent file will be uh hashed and stored in the cache so it's 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 going to be managed with the git would you use consider dbc as an alternative airflow or can those work together because, uh, okay repeat so the question please so because we need it for the recording so if if you read it low it's, it's better okay uh, would you use consider DVC as an alternative to Airflow, or can those work together? Actually, Airflow they have a, a advantage at monitoring, but the, which DVC doesn't have. So if we if we want to do a monitor our job, we have to use another tool. So in that case, uh, we cannot use the uh, Airflow with DVC, but like uh, Jenkins, we can use Jenkins with DVC to monitor our Jenkins uh, the, uh, DVC task when it takes uh, one hour, two hour, or or a day to train a model. You can you can put those uh, DVC tasks inside the Jenkins so that you can monitor the job. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much. Thank you for presenting. We are thank you. Just thank you for participating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.